Hey guys, this is Ben with Ben's Viewfinder, and we are hopefully doing everything correctly here. I got kind of a crazy setup going on, but I'm going to try to do this and, and, and try to organize. So what I'm here to show you today is the Wacom Intuos Pro uh, tablet, editing tablet. And so I am actually recording on my MacBook screen. I'm trying to record a video um, showing you kind of how I'm using it a little bit. Um, but I'm trying to remote live view this. I'm trying to do a bunch of things kind of here at once. So excuse me if I kind of screw some of this up. But this is it. This is the wonderful piece of machinery that you're looking at here. Yes, it's already dirty because I've been using it all day. But this is the Wacom Intuos Pro Medium editing tablet. Kind of cool. Got some buttons. Got our working area there. Uh, very light, very nice. Uh, and what we're doing is basically I wanted to give you an idea of what these are, what they're used for, and then kind of show you some other options. And this is the one I decided on. Uh, I, I kind of mold this over for a long time. So uh, this is your working area in here where inside these little brackets that you see on the screen, these are some of your hot keys and buttons over here on the side. Uh, and this one's nice because it has this cable that you can use, plug it into the side here and then it runs into a normal USB port and it'll uh, run perfectly fine like that nothing needed but this actually comes with a wireless kit at least the one I bought from B&H uh, that has a little uh, dongle that goes in right inside of this packaging here right inside on the side of this and goes into the USB um, receiver kind of like a wireless mouse does and you can do everything also wireless so that's kind of cool uh, so let's see, I'm going to switch over here to my computer screen. We're going to kind of talk about this. I'm showing you the one on my computer screen here, if everything is going. Let me uh, make sure screen flow is recording. Yep. Uh, and i got to be careful because this is only on a 20-minute time limit here on the D7000. So if I run out of 20 minutes, I'm going to have to restart it here really quick. So hopefully I can keep my gabber from going too crazy. So what you're looking at on the screen is the one I bought, $319. Got it from... Uh, b and H photo like I buy all my gear because they're awesome this is the one that I was considering getting which is the 13.3 inch and this is the one that actually has an LED uh, or OLED screen built into it so you can actually see the image that you're working on and I actually decided not to go this because I felt like this was more for somebody who does artwork somebody who sketches and actually does graphic design work where I'm just doing Photoshop work so I'd rather just use my monitors which is why I chose not to go with the screen and the price difference is significant if you want to see something kind of huge and amazing like if you're going to do a ton of this stuff and you want to make your whole desktop workstation like this then you've got this wonderful piece of machinery here that's a ridiculous amount of money and this is a 22 inch version and then you've got cheaper options too and this is kind of the step down version from the Intuos Pro and this is just the Intuos Creative and obviously a much cheaper option you can start off smaller try them out see if you like them and then go from there and then if you want to go even cheaper yet there's the bamboos which are really good for like traveling and doing stuff like that so it's very small uh, easy to use but the reason I chose what I chose being where I'm at is a I didn't want I want it to be portable so I want it to be the right size where it's relatively the size of a laptop so I can throw it in my bag take it with me be able to use it on the road I wanted it to be a big enough working space where I felt like I wasn't cramped where I was trying to work on just a tiny little area and then but I wanted it to be uh, versatile and so it has lots of sensitivity points and so what you're going to get as you go on if you look through some of these like the bamboo here has 512 levels of press pressure sensitivity and has a four and a half by three inch active area of working space so pretty small where if you compare it to this humongous beast right here you have 2048 uh, pressure levels and a you know humongous working area it's got a true 1080p the one that I got here still has 2048 levels of pen pressure sensitivity and has an 8.8 .8 by 5.5 inch active area to work with so you still have this nice big area here where you can work around and feel like you have room to work with uh, but you're not you know it's not a huge working space so because I, I had originally considered the large but I felt like that'd be more of like a permanent desktop piece and it wouldn't travel very well and I didn't want to get the small because I wanted to make sure I had enough room to work with in general so I kind of went with the medium and then the other thing I thought I'd show you is this here and this is the pen the editing pen that they give you to use I'm trying to hold it uh, I know the lighting in here isn't great and so it has the eraser on the back has the tip on the front 
has little buttons on the side and this requires no batteries very lightweight pretty comfortable to use uh, easy going so uh, so basically the reason you get this is kind of to replace your mouse to allow to be able to do like um, nice and fine detailed photo editing for me is why I got it so I can do uh, stuff like brushing and burning and dodging and layer masking and things like that and not have to try to do the the minute and the finite lines and stuff like that that I like to be able to do with a mouse so let me switch over really quick here in my screen here to I just got this free little sketch program from Autodesk and give you an idea of how this works so the idea is this pen you literally just as you can see now I'm moving this around and if you're looking on my screen it's appearing I'm not touching the tablet as you can see my hand doesn't do anything it's not moving now it has to have the pen there is a touch mode that you can turn on on it although for some reason it's not I don't have it set up right now on my Mac but where you can actually uh, use it like a big trackpad and tap it to click on stuff and pinch to zoom and do all types of stuff on it uh, I just don't have it set up currently on the Mac yet so I don't know what to tell you about that but uh, so really you don't have to worry about resting your hand on it while you're working and so you just hover the pen across it and then when all you do is just touch the pen to do things so here we're just using a basic pencil and as you see as I just draw a line there you go just a regular pencil line we can switch over we'll do a ballpoint pen I guess and there you go and so what's kinda cool here let me switch to a marker we'll make another line and so the advantage with these pens in this system here is that it's pressure sensitive. And so if I just touch and run across, there's my basic pencil line. Now if I touch and press hard, I get a bare line. And I can do waved lines. So you can see that as I change my pressure sensitivity as I'm writing it's gonna make thicker and lighter lines and it'll make it lighter and darker and so when you're using this in Photoshop and stuff like that and using brushes hang on just a second I'm just checking on my time making sure I don't run over my 20 minutes I'm at 7 minutes it allows you to uh, use your brushes and stuff like that without having to continually change brush sizes and feathering and things like that nice and easy and allows for very uh, you to have more control and more versatility now this is a convenience factor type thing you don't need to do this but then also you can do things digital signatures is nice uh, so there's my signature vaguely not very well so if you want to create a watermark with your own signature or something like that you could use this for it and so let me quit this but I just wanted to show you and you, you know you can draw if you're good at drawing which I'm not You can tell I'm a terrible drawer. But anyways, so if you're good at it, you can do that stuff. And you can use this to navigate everything. And what's cool is all of these buttons here, let me quit out Safari too so we have less stuff running. What's cool is that all these buttons here on the side are programmable and they're application specific. So in Photoshop, they actually, like this button right here specifically in Photoshop is your step backwards button. Where in other applications it doesn't necessarily do that and you can program do whatever you want you can make them uh, a specific keystroke you can make them a specific action you can make it a combination of keystrokes and then you also have this wonderful little thing right here in the middle this um, let me point it out here this thing which is kinda like a um, like a scroll wheel type thing and you can get this to do different things too uh, make your brush sizes different zoom in and out on things scroll up and down and so you have lots of versatility so let me show you kinda what I'm talking about so we'll select a brush here and so you'll see my brush size on my screen is kind of small but let's say I want to make it bigger I, I just press this middle button and you can see that each and it has a light on the trackpad if you see me holding it up here as I press it it rotates around to let you know which one you're on and so I want it on brush size which is my bottom right light and then all I have to do to change my brush size now is just rotate my fingers around the scroll wheel kinda like you did with the old iPods and you can control your brush size so let's make our exposure really bright and now you can see we can make it 
nice and and then oh, instead of hitting command Z I'll just hit this button and now we're undoing it so you can have your display if you want to work on a big TV or something like that you don't necessarily have to have a keyboard near you if you can set up all your commands and everything that you use in general so let's make our brush smaller and you can see that we can just do and you can see how feathered it is there compared to when I press a little bit harder up here I'll step backwards again and so this is useful for let me uh, go back and we'll just make some quick adjustments and I'll sh kind of show you how this works so let's and so you can use this thing just like a mouse and as you can see this is a picture I took um, in on our way home from Michigan in our last trip I'm just kind of showing you just to get an idea of what we do or, or how it works or whatever how I use it for photo editing and so let's say okay I'm kinda happy with the sky or whatever let's say up here but the ground is a little bit too dark so we're gonna go switch over to a brush and I think my brush size is a little too big there and so we can bring our brush size down by using the scroll wheel and let's say we want to make that brush a brighter exposure but we don't want it to be too much and so I can now without even have to switch brush sizes or opacities or anything like that I can come down here and start brushing in that exposure and oops I went over and got some of my sky and I didn't want to do that guess what this has an eraser built in I can just flip it over and now I've got an eraser oh you know what it doesn't work with this it does it if you're in the actual Photoshop the eraser does work maybe I'll have to show you in there well let's hold sorry I don't know my here you go. I'm just holding my, I think, option button to, to opposite what I'm doing or whatever. But what you could see is you can make very finite. I mean, you could see that I'm running just along the edge here and able to kind of control this on the fly without having to change my brush size. I'm just touching lighter, basically, to get right along that edge. And then, of course, you can change. Your exposure on the ground we left a little bit out over here oops now I as you could tell I don't have a ton of experience with this thing yet so I'm not doing the best demo but you can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about and so this is useful when you get all these things set up here like I have my um, button set up here on the pen now my top button here is just allows me to click and then pan and so now I can use that to pan my images so having to switch to my hand tool every time I want to move around the image I can just click there and do that if I want to switch to my brush tool I'll just press the bottom button I think there we go and now I'm switched over to my brush tool if I want to do spot removal like I have a um, sensor spot here I can just click uh, and if you hover over these buttons you'll get this little menu pops up and let you know what you're doing and so I have that set to spot removal and you can see that you can't really see it too well because it's pressure sensitive oops I'm pressing too deep but if I push down and hold you can see now I can and if I want to make my brush size bigger even though my brush size is big I can still not necessarily use that big of a brush if you see if I just tap even though I have this huge brush because I have this pressure sensitive pen I can choose just to use a little bit of it or if I press and hold you can do a lot of it so it's kind of useful for when you're doing stuff like down here where I missed a little bit in the painting or whatever so let's uh let me see what my time is okay I don't have a whole lot of time left but the idea here is to speed up your workflow and so if I cancel usually if you press and hold sorry I, I, I used it a little bit on my Windows computer earlier and so I'm trying to duplicate the layer there we go I'm just using keyboard shortcut now and so let's say we want to change 
the brightness on this down and then create a layer mask if I can keep stop from tapping over and over again and what's nice you have a one-to-one -one ratio here the the working area is your screen working area and so now we have our brush selected maybe all right we do and so now if I want to bring through what's underneath only oh, turn my oh you know <laughs> I'm being an idiot it's working but I'm not making just I'm trying to hurry and I'm screwing everything up here oh let me merge these Now we'll do a layer mask, and it should work. See, there we go. So now you can see I'm bringing through the area underneath. And again, let's see if my eraser actually works now. Yeah, I need to make my eraser brush bigger, though. But you can see I can just flip my... And you can see how sensitive it is. It's creating a very nice fine line. I can get right down to the trees here. So this makes, when you're doing detailed masking work or skin retouching or anything else, and obviously you can come back through and screw it all up again, it makes adjustments and things like that easy. And if you run into a, a situation like up here, where I have a ton of sensor spots, you have to sit there and mouse click over and over and over and over again. You can just select your spot healing brush, and this is just going to make this easy. Oh, I have a layer mask going on. I'm really good at screwing everything up, but I'm trying to record it, aren't I? Okay, so we have our spot healing brush. And so you can just come through here and eliminate these so much faster compared to trying to select everything with a mouse. As you can tell, sensor spots are my uh, great evil nemesis. How are we doing on time? We're almost out of time on the Mac, or on the, because uh, there's a 20 minute record limit on. But again, you can see how easy it is. So if I want to keep panning around my image, I can do this, and you could see as I select, you know, different pressure sensitivities. And so even though I'm only using this for this example here, but you could see how quick it is for me to move around my workspace, pick up these sensor spots, do whatever I want. And yes, I know I'm screening this image up, but I'm just showing you how easy it is to navigate around, make adjustments, do whatever you want. And then you can basically just speed up your workflow a lot and the problem that I run into is as a person who travels a lot and the video is going to go out on the D7000 here in a minute but as a person who travels a lot when I'm on the road and I'm using my MacBook to edit I hate using the little trackpad and trying to get in there and use that or even when you're trying to use a mouse having a nice surface to work at if you're not sitting at a desk let's say you're sitting on a hotel room bed and you want to use a mouse along with your computer or whatever it just always proves to be a pain this allows me to take something that is very detail oriented as it's even better than using a mouse use it along with my uh, computer while I'm on the road to be able to do full high quality editing without having to worry about coming back home afterwards and having to refix stuff like those nice finite lines and stuff that I couldn't get with good detail doing it on my desktop I can just do everything here it makes it easy uh, and it's so responsive there's no latency problems at all I've been wireless this whole time there's zero latency issues at all with using this system and it just works all the buttons work it's easy to reprogram everything it was easy to install everything uh, Wacom has a very uh, easy to use uh, easy to learn product I have never used a tablet my entire life before today on a computer system and I got this and you just saw me uh, you know show you a bunch of different features and screw around with it after only using it for a few hours so you can imagine that after a couple of months of using this how fast your editing can go how easy it can be to do things like layer masking and stuff like that and no it, no longer will you have to fight with trying to get your mouse to work just right or adjusting all your brush sizes or doing everything. I mean, all that stuff is just going to become so much faster. So, uh, 
I don't know. I know that I kind of rambled on, but I just wanted to kind of demonstrate what it is, how it works, why it can be useful to a photographer, because a lot of people think that these are just for graphic designers or just for people, uh, artists or whatever. And you can use it for that. And you can use uh, your creativity to do design work and stuff like that to add on to it. But it is useful. And think of doing stuff like skin retouching or airbrushing skin or getting rid of little hairs and stuff around, uh, you know, because I know a lot of people who follow these blogs do a lot of portrait work, but getting rid of some stray hairs and stuff around the outside of uh, a person's head or whatever that are kind of running wild. Uh, it just makes stuff easy, composite work. So you may want to consider trying one of these out. Like I said, this is the uh, Intuos Pro Medium size tablet. They make them in large sizes, small sizes. They, they The Pro comes in small, medium, large. The one with the screen, the... Uh, the Cintiq or whatever comes in different sizes also. So I think it comes 13 and a 17 or, or 22. I don't know. It comes in a bunch of different sizes. Obviously, your prices are going to range drastically. You can always start off with something small like the bamboo or whatever and try it out. But this really, if you're planning on, uh, if you want to speed up your workflow and you really want to try uh try it out the Intuos Pro really is nice and I think that if you're a person who travels a lot like I am the medium is a really good option uh, to take on the road with you it's about the size of my MacBook maybe just slightly bigger in total size and so it's not hard to just throw it in the same laptop bag as my MacBook now it does work with both PC and Mac both the wired and wireless systems work on both PC and Mac uh, I think the battery, it's pretty decent life that's in the wireless system too. So I think you get a decent amount of hours of working with it. And the nice thing is that if you have something like a MacBook or uh, an AirPlay, or if you have it set up to a large computer, like TV screen or something like that, you can use this wireless tablet, plop it in your lap, put your photo you're editing up on your big TV screen and edit away, go nuts. And you don't even need to sit at a computer. So it makes it very nice. Uh, well, I guess I know I didn't answer a ton of questions. It was more just kind of a product demo. But if you have any questions about it, I'm going to keep using it and, and finding out the cooler features about it and how it all works. Uh, but ask away, and I'll see if I can figure them out for you. Uh, check me out. You know, Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Check me out on bensviewfinder.com. Or, of course, I'm always on Facebook posting my daily photos there. So check me out there, and I will do what I can to help you guys out. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good evening.